Hi everyone, Peter here from Flow High Performance, and this is going to be another episode of Practical Applications of Science. And the study that we're going to be investigating today is called Effects of Strength Training on Squat and Sprint Performance in Soccer Players from the Journal of Strength and Conditioning Research published in 2016. So in this study, basically what they did is they got 17 professional male soccer players. So these were elite level soccer players. And they put them through six weeks of training during their season. So they trained two times per week. Both sessions were strength training sessions. And they did this for six weeks. So what they did is back squats, Romanian deadlifts, and Nordic lowers. So they did back squats and Romanian deadlifts, three to four sets of four to five reps at 85 to 90 percent of one rm and then the nordic lowers they did three sets of anywhere between three and six reps so this was high intensity training aimed at getting them stronger so what happened so first and foremost their strength improved so we can see here their back squat one rm went from somewhere around 125 kilos to nearly 150 kilos so this was before the training intervention and this was after the six week training intervention. So they put a substantial amount of weight on their back squat 1RM, nearly 25 kilos. But what did that do to their sprint performance? So in this graph here, we have changes in sprint time after training. So less sprint time means faster sprinting, which means better performance. So their five meter sprint time went down over 5%. So they got some decent improvements in that. Their 10 meter sprint time went down nearly 3%, so fairly decent improvements in that too. And then their 20 meter sprint time was improved just above 1%. So we can see here that the longer the sprint got, the less they improved. And this improvement in the 20 meter sprint time probably came from the improvement in the 5 and 10 meter sprint time anyway. So, what does this mean? Well, essentially, Strength training may benefit short sprint performance. However, high velocity sprinting probably doesn't benefit too much from strength training. So simply put, strength training does not necessarily equate to greater sprint performance. So the reason that the short sprint performance was improved compared to the longer sprint performance was due to the higher force requirements for acceleration. So when we're accelerating, we don't have any momentum and we have longer ground contact times, which means that we require to move our entire body weight from a stationary point. And the more force we can put into the ground, the greater we're gonna propel ourselves over those first few steps. However, when we start running at higher velocities, we have more reliance on the elastic properties of the muscles and the tendons. So we're using more of the stretch shortening cycle and the ground contact times are much faster. So we don't have enough time to put high forces into the ground. So that's likely the reason why we saw greater improvements in short sprint performance rather than the longer sprint performance. So strength training may be a tool that's gonna help us improve our short sprint performance and acceleration. But if we wanna improve our maximum velocity sprinting, we're probably better off doing something with shorter ground contact times and that utilizes the stretch shortening cycle like plyometrics. Thanks for watching and hopefully you got something out of this video. Remember to subscribe if you haven't already.